This is recitation week three, problem number three, closure ceremony. Let's take a minute to read the problem statement. Suppose that L1 and L2 are decidable languages. Show that the languages L1 can cat L2 and L1 star are decidable as well by constructing decider TMs for them using high-level descriptions. Proof of correctness is not required. Okay, so since L1 and L2 are decidable, let's just go right ahead and assume that we have deciders for them, M1 and M2 respectively. First, we're going to look at L1 can cat L2. I encourage you to pause the video and try to figure this out for yourself first, and then continue. Okay, let's recall the definition of L1 can cat L2. If we have some x in this language, then it can be split somewhere, where x is equal to y can cat z, y is in the first language, and z is in the second language. Let's look at some examples of how x could be split. So we see that essentially choosing a split for x is choosing some position in the string to end the first part of the string and to start the second part of the string. Notice also that the empty string counts as a potential y here and the empty string counts as a potential z here. So actually in total for this length five string, there are six possible ways to split x into two strings y and z like this. In general, there are the length of x plus one different ways this can be done. So all we need to do to check if, it, if x is in L1 can cat L2 is consider all of these possible splits. And if at least one of them works, we know that x is in L1 can cat L2. Okay, so let's create the decider called m can cat. We're gonna take in a string x and do exactly what we said. Consider all of the length of x plus 1 ways to split x into x equals y can cat z. We're going to run m1 on y, run m2 on z. If both of them accept, then we're going to accept. And otherwise, if none of these splits work, we're going to reject. Hopefully, it should be clear why m can cat is correct. So let's now try to show that m can cat is a decider. Specifically, we need to check that m can cat always halts. So the for loop on the outside, we know that's only going to run a finite number of times because the length of x is finite, which is good. So now we just need to show that each iteration of the loop always halts. In particular, the simulate m1 on y and simulate m2 on z are the places where we have to consider. But we know that m1 and m2 are deciders, so they're always going to halt no matter what input they're given. So in conclusion, we know m can cat always halts. Okay, let's move on to the next portion of the problem, showing that L1 star is decidable. Again, I encourage you to pause the video and think about this a little bit on your own. Okay, now recall the definition of L1 star. If X is in L1 star, then we can break it up into U1, U2, up through UN, where these are all substrings of X, and each UI is in L1. Okay, so let's look at examples so how we can break x up in this case. We could break x into x1, x2, and then x3 through 5. But remember, we could also add an empty string somewhere, perhaps between x1 and x2. And in fact, we can add another one and another one. So we see a problem. There are actually infinitely many ways we could split x into these possible ui substrings. So it won't really suffice to use the same strategy that we used last time. We have to be a little bit clever. So let's see what happens when we have epsilon as one of these substrings. If we have epsilon as a substring, then we have u1, u2 up through ui minus 1, then the epsilon, and then the rest of the u's. And when then we say this is an L1 star. But we can also just remove this epsilon. And then we have a finite concatenation of u's, which still form the same string x. So in fact, whenever x is non-empty, we don't have to consider epsilon as a substring. Another nice observation is, now that we know x only has to be broken down into non-empty strings, one of these breakdowns corresponds to a sorted subset of indices, which contains 0 and the length of x. So what do I mean by that? Let's look at an example. The first time we broke up x into x1, x2, and x3 through x5 corresponds to the list 0, 1, 2, and 5. 
We can think of these numbers as indicating the start and end position of each substring we're looking at. And since we're not considering empty strings, we don't have to repeat any of these indices. Now, why is that nice? Well, that's nice because there are only a finite number of these kinds of strings. So whenever x is non-empty, we don't have to do an infinite loop to check all of these possibilities. The last observation we're going to make is whenever x is empty. And what's nice about this is that when x is empty, we know x is in L1 star. This is because we can essentially just take n equals 0 in the definition where x is u1 through un, and then we get an empty string. OK, so now let's go ahead and create the actual decider. Let's call it m star. When we're given a string x, first we're going to check if x is empty. And if it's empty, we accept because of what we just said. If x is non-empty, we're going to look at every sorted list of distinct indices, which contains 0 and the length of x, just a way to break down x into non-empty substrings. So we're going to start by setting this string is good flag equals true. The reason we're doing this is because we want to check that all of the substrings are in L1. So if any of them are not in L1, we need to set string is good to false outside of this loop that we're about to do. So this loop is essentially going to look at every substring that we've uh, assigned um, called P and Q being adjacent indices in this list. All we need to do is simulate M1 on on this substring. If it rejects, we can set string is good equals false. And if string is good on the outside, then all of the M1s must have accepted, so we can accept. And otherwise, if all else fails, we will reject. So again, it should be fairly clear why this is a working function, because we're looking at all of the possible witnesses to show that x is in L1 star, meaning all of the possible ways we can split x and get things in L1. Now we just need to make sure that m star will always halt. So we do the outer for loop a finite number of times because there are a finite number of these sorted subsets of indices that we're talking about. And the inner for loop is basically just a traversal of this list, which is also finite. So the only troubling spot could be where we're simulating m1 on the substring. But once again, m1 is a decider. So we know that m1 is always going to halt no matter what the input is. And it turns out that yes, m star is always going to halt, just as we want. 